Hey everybody and welcome back to Anime on Draft. We're here with you today with episode 14. It is 14, right? Yeah, 14. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm joined here with my two co-hosts as always. We've got Drew. 14. 14. And by Rolando. The by the way. <laughs> 14, by the way. No longer no longer 11, 13 in May. You guessed it right. I'm 12, by the way. Mm-hmm. Anyway. 14. Um, 14, by the way. That's yeah, what 14. I meant. Yeah, my 14, bad. My bad. Way. 14. So today we are going to be talking about, as always, a uh, soccer request. We've got some of the new season animes that we've been watching. We're going to talk about those. And today our beer of choice is the... It's a Hefeweizen. Vian Vi- Vi- Stefaner. <laughs> yes, that. What he said. Vian Stefaner. All right. It's a Hefeweizen made by that place. And it is known for being the world's oldest brewery. Holy shit. So, Rolando, you picked this beer. What what led to this choice? Um, I wanted to make sure that we could all find a beer this week because what I picked last week, n- not everyone could find. <laughs> so, I figured... It led um, to fun times. Yeah, I figured maybe I would contact you guys first. So, I asked you <laughs> if uh, this was available <clears throat> by you and you said it was. So, um, I also wanted a Hef. So, just, you know, to mix things up since we've today is gonna be a good day for a half because it's been hot as fuck this weekend so i like a a good refreshing half on a uh on a hot day it's been death today like ridiculous Ugh. but um yeah so i was gonna ask did the fact that it comes from the world's oldest brewery have any bearing on your decision yes it said that and i said all right it's this one we have to get it. Even if you guys have to drive to a different city, you get this beer. That's what you told us, actually. Yeah. He, he pretends that he asked us, but that's not true. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Well, let's just, you know, jump right into it. I've got mine poured out here, and uh, right off the bat, it looks like a Hef, wouldn't you say? That's yeah. the first thing I said when I poured it. I'm like, this is the Hef of Eisen. Yeah. Yeah. That golden looks hue. just like it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cloudy, golden, deliciousness. Oh, it smells... We got- really it smells like, like oh wow it's, it's, it has it that very fruity that spice it's it fruity like, and then that spice that they always use it smells like pineapples more than like does it anything to me it's a fruity smell for sure yeah it's fruity and it's got that i i always forget the name of the smell the, or the spice that they always use in belgian coriander. beers coriander coriander yes. that is a very fruity taste Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's really fruity. It's really fruity. The smell is spicier than the flavor, though. Mm-hmm. To me, at least. Um, head retention is good. Holy uh, shit. This I'm going to throw a really warning good. out to everyone. When you pour it, I mean, I went, like, st- full stupid. I never go full retard. I only went full stupid. <laughs> um, and I, I tilted it, but I, like, turned the bottle too hard, and it just, poof, and it, like... The head just explodes. It's crazy. Like more than more than like you'd half, expect. It's, so. uh, it's crazy. It does. Yeah, I know. But I'm just giving a warning. Okay, Drew. Um, no. No. It, it's pretty simple. I think the flavors are they're there, and there's have not we, much else. To have it. we done half of Isaac before? Nope. We did the Widmer. I thought, didn't we? No, we didn't. No, we didn't. <laughs> no, we did we like didn't. that Orange Avenue Wit, which was yeah. like. It's a wit beer, but it's not like yeah, a half. It's yeah, we didn't like do a half a of our half. Yeah, it doesn't not accrue or it does not conform to the uh, the standards of purity law of fifteen sixteen yeah. like this one. Oh yeah. shit! Yeah. yeah, we can't count it then. So strike this from your memory. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so it's actually it's a good session beer too. It's five point four percent, so it's not like crazy strong. You probably don't want ten of these in a night, but um, no. You could have a couple on a cool day, like or on a hot day like today, to cool you off. And don't forget to store dark and keep cool. I don't know how you store dark, but keep it cool, guys. Keep it cool. Dark bottle. I mean, I, yeah, I was just, I was making a joke. Okay, it went I mean, over your head clearly. A dark bottle. I mean, <laughs> screw you. All right. Um, you know, do you guys like? I think it's pretty simple, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's not much I, to it. That's what you. That's what you want from a half, though. You want yeah. citrus. You want like the wheat, a little bit of spiciness, mm-hmm. 
and just something that you can easily drink and this and is all of those things it's not all that carbonated though it's kind of bubbly when you look at it but um how about uh this this will be the shortest beer review we've ever done but uh you guys yeah, want to jump right to into it. yeah exactly into the rating let's uh <laughs> yeah. let's start with drew because i know he's a big big hef fan this like i i look at it and it reminds me of the widmere hefeweizen which is my favorite but i think this might overtake it as Ooh. my favorite half this wow. is like so, like i took a sip of this and it is just like wow that is like really really good <laughs> there's i don't have anything bad to say about it it's like it's like the perfect hef. Like I thought Widmere had it done, but this is like it's simple, but that's what makes it so good. It's like mm-hmm. just I I want to drink a lot of these in a very the, um, short amount of <clears throat> short amount of time. The Widmer is probably one of my favorite hefts too, actually. Uh, but this one is, I think I agree with you that it's probably like it tastes better. I have something yeah. about it, but. Yeah. And I could I could see it being elevated too if we put some fruit on this, some fresh fruit. But um, mm-hmm. as it is, it's just it's excellent. I'm gonna rate it probably the highest I've given four point seven five. This is a fucking good beer, boys. Nice. Mm. Wow. What would you, do you think uh, putting like an orange on it would give it a five or something? I don't know. It would have to like I don't know make you cream your I, pants. I can't I can't I can't judge something perfectly. <laughs> without like i can't just say yeah it would definitely be like, what if a, there's a, a what if there's a bathtub full of it and you could just jump into it that sounds I disgusting would, that's gross it's a waste of beer <laughs> yeah it's uh. a waste of beer that sounds really gross yeah but it sounds like something that's right up your alley though mm. <laughs> ball crushing uh rolando what about you <laughs> no we'll save that for later um yeah <laughs> i've had the widmer i've had um other hefts that i can't even remember the name but like a lot of the hefts i've also had have are not like from from germany they're like craft hefts so mm-hmm. they may not particularly um comply with uh, certain rules maybe that's what it is like the i haven't had like a purely german hef yeah and like maybe this is just it in its purest form and everybody's trying to take from that i don't know this or they're trying like- to be too like Fancy, too fancy with it yeah yeah, yeah. <clears throat> this is pretty i mean it's it's simple and um a lot of times i like to say that like um like flavor complexity can be good but at the same time it can detract from what you're going mm-hmm. for this sure. is very simple um it's like just from the first taste i was like wowed by it so i'm gonna give it a four and a half it's, it's just good yeah, it is definitely really good. Um, I, I agree that like sometimes having too much can take away from from what you're tasting or whatever. Um, and if all these other people are trying to get fancy with a Hefeweizen, I mean, I just I guess we could just say, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Because clearly the the simple citrus coriander blah 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 it seems to work for people but my rating for same reasons as the other two guys um uh, is gonna be a four and a half i i think it's just you could pick it up <clears throat> you drink it all day and then it's just refreshing it's light it's it tastes good and you don't gotta sit there thinking about it <laughs> yeah so this definitely. is probably gonna be like one of my go-to beers for this summer mm-hmm. yeah, yeah this is excellent I'm definitely and gonna pick this up again. I'm pleasantly surprised, and you know, right, rightly so. This is, man, I like this. It's like disappointing too, because like I, I, you, you guys know, like I always talk about when we talk about halves, I talk about Widmere. I'm like, mm-hmm. I've I lived in Portland, and Widmere's so good. Like you guys have had it, you guys like enjoyed it. It's, it's a good. really good beer, mm-hmm. but this is this is just better, and yeah. it and yeah. it's because so they sick. follow the standards. I think what I'm going to do is, because I think we're going to be drinking this beer, like, we're going to go out and buy this beer because it's, like, that good. I think what we're going to do, what we're going to have to do is buy a sixer of Widmere and buy a sixer of this and, like, have them, like, one after another and, like, compare them. Have a face-off. What if we did a blind taste test? Oh, that would be good, too. That's a good idea. Maybe maybe we should do that as, like, a one-off thing. We should do, so, like, we we have, you know, like, one of this, one of the Widmer, and then one of, you know, like the very crafty um, mm-hmm. hefts. Mm-hmm. And then, like, you know, Ooh. like, come, like, do blind, see what we think. And then only one person should know, like, what each yeah. one is so that we don't forget. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We just, we just pour, like, <laughs> we pour it, um, 
so we pour it differently for each person or whatever. So that yeah, yeah. it's not one person pouring it. We like do or one just person have like at a time. Thir- a third party pour it, yeah. and uh, we could do yeah. that too. You could do that too. <clears throat> Or we but, we like pour them all and then and then we blindfold one person and then we mix up the cups. Whatever. That could be we a good yeah. Out. That might work if we just blindfold, because mm-hmm. like could be a good. We can we can mm-hmm. obviously you know judge, like you can tell the difference just by looking at the color. Mm-hmm. Yeah, usually. So it that might. You I don't know, know. Especially if you see we'll, the uh, <laughs> We'll we'll figure it out. Rolando yeah, will we'll have to like come down one week and we'll we'll do that. Yeah. That'll be cool. That's a good idea. Cool. Yeah. So look forward to that. Um, but as of right now, it looks like everybody loves this beer, and rightly so because it's delicious. Unheffing um, believable. Unheffing believable. I think we just found our title. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> there we go. Unheffing believable. Mm-hmm. But um, so you know, let's move on while we enjoy these delicious, 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 unheffing believable. I'm okay, half, I'm, I'm already halfway on. through this one. Yeah. yeah, me too. Actually, I'm <laughs> halfway. Gonna we're gonna have to grab s- another one. We're gonna have to pit stop and grab another. But yeah. uh, let's. Uh, how about let we jump into before we do that our uh, weekly pairing. We talk about soccer request and uh, the most recent episode. We've we've got uh, shoot. She got everybody the queen convicted is what it's called. The queen convicted. Yeah. And yeah. everybody, all the people they go on like a mini vacation except for Ruriko and, um, Shiori. uh, Shiori because they live there. So <laughs> vacation for them is discount where they live. They're, they're discount it's not discount Katori, but they're, <laughs> they, it's the, it's not a vacation for them either because they're still working. Yeah, they're yeah. still they're like checking out the empty homes and things like that. They're but coming I just up wanted with to, uh, fucking Airbnb. Yeah, they're like, oh, let's do it. Yeah, that's exactly what they're doing. And then the ending where they they meet the random Mexicans. That was stupid. I was like, were they just or were they just straight from Spain? I don't know I, because who knows? I couldn't tell. Like, but one thing I did have to say. Um, is that the accents of the people speaking Spanish was better than any accents I've heard in animes of people speaking English. English. I'm just going to say that. There's so, only like two yeah. people that like in anime speak English, you know, like with like a natural accent. And that's because they're just native English speakers mm, and right. they just always hire like the same two dudes. <laughs> <laughs> um <clears throat> But I, I actually, when I started watching the episode, I kept thinking that the what happened was not what I thought it would <laughs> thought would happen because I thought she was gonna go back to Tokyo, but instead she went back to her hometown. Yeah, which I that guess was different. That was like after seeing it, that was the obvious choice of what's gonna happen. But I didn't think of it at all. I don't. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I I liked the episode. Uh, I thought that they did a good job with like. Cause she was clearly having that a crisis like before, you know, and she went home and she, she just kind of went around town and was talking to people and the same people like, or all the people had a similar experience. They went there and noticed how they've changed and how they see like their environment around them. Mm-hmm. That isn't their work or whatever. And well, and so everyone's like trying to, that. trying to poach them and like get them to come back. Like, Hey, mm-hmm. you know, Sanai come work on my new project or, uh, Hey, you know, come, uh, what was it like Moe's like, Hey, come be an actor or an actress again. Come to this workshop. No, be yeah. Be, be an Change actor. Genders. actor. Turn into a male. Yes. <laughs> she really um, just wants her to be an actor only for her. And then, yeah. like, uh, Yo- Yoshino's mom's like, hey, come sell this bullshit product in this hometown. So it's you don't just like, like everybody's like, dude? <laughs> no, I, I don't. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, it's because you're allergic. You're allergic. I, yeah. I'm, I'm, <laughs> that's, yeah, that's why you, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't walk I'm within, sad. like, like five sad. feet of that. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, it's like everybody trying to, like, poach them to come back, which was, it was, I don't know. It was whatever. I feel like the rest of it was like, oh, hey, come do this for us. And then I feel like uh, the actor girl, I forget her name, Maki. Is Ma- that her Maki. Name? Maki should take that option because she still yeah. hasn't resolved her own issue. So she yeah. should go take the job. Be like, hmm, I actually don't like this. Well, Let me continue what I'm doing. They, it's she probably like it. setting up you know, a conflict for later. Mm-hmm. Another one. We, yeah. we still don't have the resolution between her and her dad. So that's going to have to come eventually. Mm-hmm. I, I like at least though, that they're kind of like trying to keep characters consistent. Like Moe is still there. Um, I don't know if we'll ever see more of like Yoshino's family 
or anything like that. Well, I but, think we uh, will because they did say, like, her dad did say, like, oh, we should come and visit you next time. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah, and like you know, we went there when you were younger, mm-hmm. and it's like it, when you're when. <laughs> This was something that made me mad. It was like, you you probably were going to tell your parents, hey, I'm going to Monoyama or whatever to, you know, do this new job. It's like exciting. I want to tell everybody about it, whatever. She thinks she's going to be queen. You know, let's why not tell everybody? Wouldn't her family be like, oh, yeah, we went there when you were younger and you got to participate right? in this play <laughs> where you were a fucking queen. Like, don't doesn't that like seem familiar? Yeah. Um, they just, well, I mean, she did just let it out it, within but, on the first yeah. episode, though. Yeah, but, yeah. but I... <laughs> I don't know. It's like you, you would think you'd think the family would at least say something about that. You know what I mean? Because it was it was probably like a big deal when she was a little girl. Like that's like a little girl's dream to be a princess or to be a queen. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Well, with this episode, I thought the content, like the majority of the content was good. I just did not agree with the quality of the episode. So like mm. there was a lot mm. of issues with pacing that I thought could have been cleaned up overall. Like the they. There were some scenes that could have been shortened and or swapped around with other scenes to make it flow better. And then there are some scenes like I understand they're trying to, you know, like show like the town and stuff because like Yoshino, her was it her dad's friend owns a company that makes the fish cakes. So like, oh, hey, if you like this queen job doesn't work out, just come back. Um, I feel like those scenes were kind of unnecessary. They did bring it up twice in the episode. They kind of, you know detracted from the pace of it especially because there's like drew you can attest to this the scene where it first shows up is where yoshino is talking to her mom and the animation quality was just very very <laughs> poor like i, I don't, don't usually, understand i don't usually make note of that kind of thing but it was just like so blatantly bad I especially like, for pa works. where did the budget where did the budget go <laughs> is it where she was talking to her in the kitchen the, okay yeah. so in the manju se- segueing off of that the budget definitely didn't go to the new op or ending because those oh, were God. both awful the ending like, wasn't the, as that bad the, the opening the opening, the opening in opening particular i was like listening to it i was typing like what face like this is it's, disgusting like i ugh. Like I don't yeah. like I I like to listen to uh, OPs and I'll talk about an OP of the of an anime that we're gonna talk about a little bit later, which was dope. Um, but like I'm I'm down to watch the OP. You know, usually it's like fun, exciting, get you hyped up for the episode. I'm skipping this bitch every time. Like oh yeah, my it's, god, it's, it's not it's very so good. bad. <laughs> you you guys like, like normally I skip it every time. Well, I mean, Alec, I'm I don't gonna, I'd definitely time. skip it this time. <laughs> the, Normally, like PA work shows have good opening and ending themes. This just, yeah. I'm I was just caught off guard by. It. I was just like, I don't really like this song. It doesn't really seem to fit the it doesn't the style of the show either. <laughs> so I'm just like, this is kind of weird. The ending song didn't was, bother me that much though. It was it wasn't as bad, but it it's just uh, on the on season one or the I guess it's still season one in the first half. I was I watched the OP on every episode because I yeah. actually really like the OP of this this one. Normally I skip them. This is probably the only show where I watch the OP every time. But this new one came out and I think I watched about like eight seconds of it. I was like, nope. <laughs> and I just went back to to my yeah, usual terrible. skipping it. It's not very good. Um, are you talking about though the the bad animation when she was talking to her mom in the kitchen yes. eating the manju? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Because I noticed that too, especially when she gets up to leave. I'm like, wow, this isn't very good the, when she, the eyes she was were like, like fucked up it was just all bad she it was like really when when she was like walking and they had like the ocean in the background and when she was like going down the stairs or whatever her eyes didn't move and it was just when like, she looked <laughs> cross-eyed a lot yeah. throughout the whole thing it was just like why her i her pupils are pointing in two different directions and like it's, you know what uh, you know what they did draw well her the naked body of her sister like oh yeah they, when she they, went into the they, bathtub they yeah, got the two they got seconds that spot on, of the high like, school kid yeah <laughs> <laughs> They're like here, this needs to be good. Otherwise, people will notice where other points where the animation was poor. <laughs> Getting uh, a little bit away of uh, what we're talking about now. Um, one thing that I was surprised they didn't bring up was that Yoshino isn't married. That's like a big thing. Oh in yeah, that culture, especially like, since his sister is dating somebody. That and yeah. that's what I was going to talk about too. It's like you know the the dad is like all excited. You know, oh she's dating this guy, and like the sister talks about I'm going to marry him and just live in this town and you know be static for the rest of my life. And Yoshino's like that. Like she didn't say it, but like she's probably thinking in her mind like that. It sounds so awful to me. Like yeah, I want to get like, out. She's like shoot me wanna, now. <laughs> yeah, I want to I want to do something more. I don't want to just be static and live here uh, and all that things. And she also like I think the the biggest part of the episode was like contrasting like Yoshino or sorry not Yoshino. Um, Manoyama and her hometown. 
Yeah. They show like scenes of like, it's like very similar. Mm-hmm. It's like, um, shops and different things with like the clothes grading on them and like just very similar shots of both towns so there's like these you know deep parallels um between the two towns so i think she feels like obligated to to not only maybe like help monoyama because she sees her the same things in her town um but maybe come back and you know help her friend who's like her friend is like housing or something like yeah help her with that her friend trying to increase permanent residence Mm -hmm. into the town and whatnot what i what i noted in my notes was um what was good about her returning to her hometown is that she got a new perspective because you know she hadn't been there in a while and Mm -hmm. so like She's like, oh, I don't want to live here. Like, this is where I've been my whole life. I need something different. But, like, there's stuff you miss. I wrote down. Let me see. I said, um, so you miss a lot when you're not looking for it slash you're looking away from it. So, like, with her hometown, there's a lot of stuff she missed um, that she could have used to, <clears throat> like, you know, help her her queen job over in Manoyama. But... She just, you know, wasn't looking for it, was looking away from it. And, like, it took her, like, and, like, how she feels kind of like the whole Founders Festival thing was a failure to go back home, get a new, fresh new perspective on something that she's familiar with. It's her hometown. And then kind of take that back with her. So I thought that it was it was nice that they showed her, like, they showed her kind of growing as a character, you know, realizing that, like, hey, sometimes it's the stuff that you miss, like, from that you're you know that you're f- like you think you're familiar with it but you've missed some things that you can take well, away and, a lot of stuff from and also too it's like it's not always about just you maybe there's you know you got to look at the bigger picture sometimes it's, it doesn't always have to be about you and your problems and different things like that i think the main thing to take away from this episode too is a quote that the younger sister says it's uh she's quoting her dad but she says achieving normal happiness is the hardest thing to do mm-hmm. and i think that's like the big the big takeaway from all of this in this show in general it's like we don't know you know what what qualifies as your particular normal happiness, but no matter how you get to it, it's always going to be a tough road. And we see that through all the conflict that all the girls have and different Mm -hmm. things like that. So I think that summed up the show really well for me that, that really stood out for me when she said that she's like, Oh, I killed the mood saying that, but it's like, it's true. You know, it's hard (laughs) to achieve happiness. It's not an easy road, but I think, you know, as we move forward, we're going to try to move towards, you know, that more normal type of happiness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and along what you said, Rolando, about um, kind of looking away to see things, it's like when you live in a town, like, for example, San Diego, and then somebody comes as a tourist, and they're telling you about all these things they saw, and you're like, I've never seen those in my entire life, and I've been here 25 years. Yeah. You know, it's, it's that exactly like that. So I, I agree, because I've completely had that happen with random people who came from Los Angeles, came down, saw something, and they were like, oh, you should check this out. I'm like, yeah, I should. That's really cool. Yeah. And then... Um, and so it, it's it, it was nice to see them kind of kind of do that with with all the girls. It seems like they're going to have this new perspective, well, Even, what, like yeah. the IT girl, too, because she was like, hmm, well, I feel like an outsider here. So she feels more at home at Monoyama and she but she's also seems like the girl said you seem more assertive and and that sort of thing. And she just I don't want to run away. So you see her issue coming back. And I, I liked that scene. That scene was really nice. for Yeah. Me. They did a good job of, you know, like highlighting everyone. Like there was like kind of like a status update, quote unquote, for everybody. Um, so, I mean, they they did a good job with the content. They just didn't do a good job of making it, you know, mm-hmm. flow as an episode because mm-hmm. it kind of yeah. felt disjointed yeah. where you're just like, oh, we jump here. Oh, we jump here. Uh, right. All right. I guess we're now we're going to have Yoshino for like 15 minutes. Uh, OK, we're jumping back. Like it right. just like felt like with it was without direction. Maybe it was Kinda on like purpose. Choppy. You know? Maybe because they're Maybe. all we're they're moving, all looking for their own direction. It's all meta and shit. <laughs> Do you no, dude, think that moving, they're looking for moving. one direction? <laughs> no, <laughs> we're mo- we're moving into glass lip territory, boys. No. <laughs> Okay, moving this is on. Where, so, this is where it happens. <laughs> Let's not go there. <laughs> I'm not going to make um, a certain statement that they do a very good job of portraying a certain thing. But 
<laughs> um, I, I also thought from this episode that I think one of the reasons I like Yoshino so much is she has that kind of attitude where mm-hmm. she's like, I want to do something only I can do. Yeah. And she wants to be unique, essentially. And I think the reason I like her so much is because that's very appealing to our culture. That's kind of that's a very like mm-hmm. American thing. It's like, well, I want to get a job that other people do, but I want to do it in a way that only I do it. And I want to bring something new to the table and I want to be unique. And it's really, you know, we really have that mindset in a lot of ways. And so I think that's probably why I like her so much in the show because she makes sense to me mm-hmm. more so than the other characters. The other ones make sense, but she really like speaks to that core American in me, I guess. Yeah, I agree with you. Like, I think she, I've, I've liked her character from the start, but um, this episode, you know, obviously brought it out more. Mm-hmm. So good episode it was choppy, but yeah, it could just be all the director. It's meta, was directing dude. it directionless. <laughs> so it's meta. with no direction. It's with it's with no direction to find no, one direction. Is it no? Uh, I already forgot the Bob Dylan. Like not. It's not Bob Dylan didn't write the song, but oh, no direction home. That's like the folk the folk song that uh, he uh, he sang that or he sang he sung he dude he songed it um, that he brought back to popularity. <laughs> yeah, but the no, 60s. there's the the Martin Scorsese Scorsese documentary on Bob Dylan, No Direction Home. Um, mm, mm-hmm. This one had a direction home. She went home. <clears throat> she did. Completely yeah. different aside. They all went home. I don't know why I'm even talking yeah. about this. I don't know. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think overall it was a good, it was like content, good episode. Like you said, it struggled in a couple places, but um, it's still a good addition to the show. And I'm interested to see kind of what all the girls bring back once they go back to Manuyama and they're going to come back. Guess what? With a vengeance. I'm just going to say it now. <laughs> yeah, with their Airbnbs. Their Airbnb. Mm, they couldn't vengeance. say it. They just said a website. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they did. They just said. Well, there's they, a they website. Mentioned, <laughs> they mentioned too. It's like, oh yeah, most like people who own like motels and hotels and stuff like that are gonna be angry about this because <laughs> <laughs> it's it's like a, it's actually a really big issue in Japan. Like it's almost like banned over there. They, they don't want people staying in Airbnbs. And yeah, stuff because like it takes that, away but, tourism money. Yeah, 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 yeah. From hotels and stuff. Yeah, it's it it works. I think in. Uh, in like places here because the, like when there are tourism in cities, there's more people than there are hotels, I guess. I don't know. There, there's it, less real a, estate to work with than there is like people coming. Yeah. 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 Unless you're in so. like the, you know, like the Midwest where, I mean, like there's probably even like, it wouldn't even be worth it to <laughs> like Airbnb or whether you just go to a hotel, it's affordable. Yeah. 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 You just buy a house. It's affordable. Or you too. just buy a house. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, you just buy a house. It's very affordable. There. It is very affordable Com- comparatively. <laughs> yeah, compared to, to California. Compared to California, yeah. it's very reasonable. But uh, yeah, and then of course at the end, I want to bring it back. We had the group of of random Hispanic individuals speaking Spanish with a correct accent, and they were very afraid of them. So How correct. Um, was it? Um, the accent was very good, like compared to the English accent that they usually have. But <laughs> I just I'm curious. I'm afraid now to go to Japan because I think they're going to be afraid of me because I'm I'm Mexican and they're clearly afraid of Mexican people. Well, I and mean, so I don't know if I'm safe there. They they <laughs> might look at you as having the cursed blood of the taco lover. Oh, that's right. The cursed blood of the taco lover. <laughs> Thank you. Jesus Thank Christ. you. Uh, what was the name of that show? Saki. Um, <laughs> Saki. That's right. Yeah. The cursed Jesus. blood of the taco lover. Tacos. Tacos, where are my tacos? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Before we get on too many tangents, um, let's go ahead and let's switch over to happy hour. Drinks are half off, um, but you get nothing from me. Um, so Ooh. we have the new season of anime out, and it's starting. Some have come out and some have not. Um, I've watched a couple. I'm sure you guys have watched a couple so far, a couple of the new stuff. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> what shows have you guys watched so we can like let's drew you want to start and like talk about some of the shows you've watched um, so far none of my shows are out other than uh kaki Gur- gurui um and i know rolando watched it as well uh so i guess we can talk about that but like i'm waiting for gamers exclamation point to come out uh hajimete no gal as well as uh, New Game. The first episode, and we'll talk about this, I guess, really quickly. The first episode of New Game is, like, oh, technically God. out. Yeah, it's- but it's not, like, really. And, like, 
Google Translate <laughs> translated it or something, and the translation's awful. No, it's probably so just, just some trolling fan sub group. I bet. Yeah, it's really it's, bad. It's because funny, they know, though. Yeah, they know <clears throat> that it's gonna be like picked up by like you know, mm-hmm. somebody like Crunchyroll or Funimation or something. And so they, but yeah, Crunchyroll is going to have it on the 11th. So it'll, it'll come out on that, but it's like, that's what I was saying. Like they probably didn't want to bother like doing it well. So they just like trolled everybody. Yeah. <laughs> like and I was really bad. I watched the whole, the whole episode because the subs were cracking me up. My two favorite parts were the, the girl who always, she always has her, she takes her pants off at night and she sleeps there mm. and she's just in her panties someone was like oh, hey do you want to put some clothes on and she goes cabbage oh i totally like cabbage comma i totally forgot that's what she <laughs> says she instead of oh i totally forgot she literally exclaims cabbage <laughs> i t- completely forgot and i died i died laughing i was like she well, just what said did, cabbage what what did they call uh hifumi? what did they say that was my was? other favorite one they said hifumi san and then something and they translated did as Himalayas, at comma, and then went into the sentence. <laughs> so we have cabbage, I completely Himalayas forgot, is about right. and Himalayas. Yeah, it's so I was just, I watched the whole, I watched it's the close. whole episode just for the, just for the subtitles. Like, I, I do have to say, it looks like it's going to be fun to watch, just like the first season. Uh, the animation was good, and, and the, you know, everything about it was as good as the first one, but uh, the subs, right. I'm telling you, if you want good comedy, mm. just go right. watch, just go read those subs i have an idea of what the plot's gonna be because like i've read some of the the manga mm-hmm. after the last season or the first season was out so like i have i i know the general direction of where the season's gonna go so mm-hmm. i'm looking forward to it and it's gonna be good, a lot of there's a lot of i don't know how much they cover it like i like you've seen it but like i know that there's like a certain situation that will occur between alba and um I already fucked. What's her name? Pants, no pants girl. Um, Blonde, no pants. Blonde. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> cabbage. Cabbage. Between cabbage Alba and Cabbage. <laughs> yeah, so it, it looks like it'll be good, but uh, yeah, wait for the uh, July 11th. Yeah. And it will be out. So. A couple days. Mm-hmm. But uh, Rolando, do you want to talk about, uh, with me, uh, Kakegurui? I guess it's called Compulsive Gambler in English. Yeah, um, I think Kakegurui is like the actual word in Japanese. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah. It's to me it seems like it's going to be a good show. I th- we were yeah. talking about it a little bit and we think it's going to be like a combination of like uh food wars uh mixed with like prison school but with like less comedy, more like dramatic situations but with all the, all the lewdness. Um, yeah, it's you get, like you <laughs> you, you described so it as lewd. like it it's similar to food wars in terms of like the way it plays out but I was mm-hmm. saying it was a lot more like prison school in terms of style. Yeah, the prison. I definitely get the prison school style. It's definitely uh, like that. Um, the food wars where I bring food wars in. It's like there's not food. Obviously, it's different like gambling games and things like that. But it's like you have the student council who has like different uh, areas of proficiency. Uh, we saw in episode two, uh, one of the student council members loves like card games and she had like never lost a card game. Um and then in the preview of the third episode, um, we have like this like classical Japanese student council member who's going to play like classical Japanese games. So we're going to kind of get like the uh, the formation of conflict between each different role and like what they like to do. And then having I guess she's not even the protagonist. Like there's this like bitchy protagonist guy, but it's like the main girl is going to be like going through here and just like figuring out how they're cheating or how they're like what they're good at and beating them at it. Would, That's kind of the uh synopsis. Would you say they're going to run the gambit on all of the gambling <laughs> games? <laughs> oh, we're so punny today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I agree with you. Um the first couple of episodes were promising, although I did accidentally watch episode two first, and I <laughs> did, it didn't even like skip a beat. Like I just didn't even notice. I was just like, "This is kind of weird how they're just kind of jumping into it." But yeah, uh, but that's it, cool. was, it was still good. <laughs> um, it's definitely like it's Studio Mappa, so it's got a distinct style to it, and mm. Mappa all, will always like they they don't disappoint. Um, so I, I'm looking forward to seeing the rest of this. Yeah, I uh, thought it, I thought the first two episodes kept me really engaged. I wanted more, uh, which is always good. For sure. Uh, 
I know one of the shows I've been watching, I we saw this at um the first episode. I, it was the first episode at Anime Expo, Expo, the restaurant to another world, Rolando. Yeah. Um I, that I one, missed like I'm half of it because I had to take a phone call. But I did right, watch you took, the full episode. You missed you missed the commentary from the crowd too. Yeah, I did. That was part of the fun. Um, you wanna elaborate? Yeah, I'm gonna elaborate. So the when we were watching this episode and there's a there's a scene where it's it's the main horn girl she she has to like take a shower. <clears throat> clean up so she can help out at the place and he says you can use the shower and so she goes into the shower and it's that typical anime shower scene you know where they show the back of the girl and her arms are wrapped around her or whatever and out of nowhere in the crowd they're showing the scene and this guy just goes Echi! and just like yells it out <laughs> super fucking loud Man. super loud and everyone just starts laughing it was the best thing I'm disappointed and, um, I missed that you you had stepped out <laughs> literally like ten seconds before he did it. You you like jumped out and then we're out of the room and then like five six seven seconds after that it was like edgy. It was so good, dude. <laughs> it was epic. And then uh, later the episode finished and uh, it was in between the two episodes and the the announcer lady who was working that specific hall was saying no flash photography or video um, videos. Uh, don't take it during the show or whatever and uh, the same guy just yells out you're my waifu I love you <laughs> so it was, it was pretty funny uh, the commentary coming from the crowd but it's too bad Drew wasn't there because I bet you like he would have been doing the same thing yeah you could have yelled along with him dude he would probably I he am. probably would have just yelled like made a <clears throat> made a loud like, ah! sound <laughs> start screaming dude just like screaming if i don't just, get, if i don't get my way i just start screaming my legs <laughs> wait, wait. Well, wait. alec there was something we were we were, was it something at anime expo where we were just like my legs like that's no i was t- so i was, we went to go to get the beer earlier drew and i and i was trying to remember what that was because there was that time where something happened something and then we happened. were both just like my legs and we started cracking up but i don't remember what it was just i don't something remember happened either. I think it was at Anime Expo, though, right? It was. It was, yeah. Because I I thought it was at Anime Expo earlier, too. I'm like, uh, I don't remember what it was, though, but it was inside It was was during the next anime we watched. Was it? You fell asleep after it. Yeah, I did fall asleep. (laughs) (laughs) It's not... Okay, let me me explain this real... Let me explain Classic. this real fast. Okay. The, the fact that I fell asleep has nothing to do with the anime. All right. The reason I fell asleep was because I don't speak Japanese, so I can't understand them just by speaking. And the dude in front of me kept adjusting his seat like every five seconds. So I'm sitting here craning my head left and right and above him trying to see the subtitles to the point where I got tired of it and just stopped looking at the subtitles. His head was covering half the screen. So all I really got was the top part and then the right and left sides ish. And so basically it got to the point where I didn't know what was going on. I couldn't see what was going on. I was tired because I I had been up all day and I drove um, early in the morning. And so I just fell asleep. (laughs) has nothing to do with the anime. Classic. It has to yeah. do with the dickhead in front of me and the fact that I was tired. So anyways. So um, yeah, like to elaborate back. on this thing, like my legs is some thing that you guys, I don't know, like you want to explain. It, it, it's a it's a joke where we're driving around and somehow we came up with the idea that somebody was going to walk out in the street and then just like be really slow and then stop and then collapse on the ground and just be like wait my legs and just basically <laughs> yell at us not to keep driving because their legs hurt or so, <laughs> something along those it lines it's and it's stupid but yeah it's, yeah. it's like a s- stupid inside joke that just now that everyone my legs everyone's into the inside joke now but yeah, you all know the inside joke basically so the ne- the other episode we watched before we left was the i don't know if it was episode one or two of centaur's life um, oh, that's right. God. That was the show. It's actually it's actually <laughs> a lot better than I thought it was going to be, but um, no, it's not. I couldn't it, tell you. I there was yeah, Alec fell asleep. There there was like a specific scene where like there um there's like this mermaid like there's like a mermaid race and then um like like another like it was like a cat race dude like he's like childhood friends with like some like female mermaid and he's like carrying her to school because like they're on land not in like water and um and then like alec and i just looked at each other we're just like 
my legs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I remember. That. And then it was not long after that that I'm pretty sure I fell asleep. Right? Yeah. yeah. I just kept start dozing. And, uh, uh, oh, it's over. All right. Time to go now. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, the um, restaurant to another world looked really promising. Um, yeah. There were some really funny moments, especially at the beginning where the dragon girl or whatever, <laughs> yeah, she's the, like, okay, here we go. Queen. And then she's like, and she just like she she's like the soup she she <laughs> has she can go in human form and like you know she gets you know beef stew from like the restaurant in like the real world and then she takes back a pot to like the demon world and then just like turns back into dragon form and it's just like kind of like you know like kind of like how like she, a dog you know like drinks water out of a bowl it's just like yeah. eating the stew <laughs> she's just sticking her tongue in the bowl and like bloop Bloop, what is bloop. It? What is and it's this the, human the size Japanese <laughs> fascination with like monster girls like I don't know. <laughs> and they're demons so they're all demons and they all hold some different like yeah, when they're in they're, human form they have to have some they're monsters mark or whatever it's, they're monster girls it's, okay it's, it's, le, le, le genre okay if you want to if you want to be ignorant of of what it really <laughs> no, I'm just kidding <laughs> um it, but yeah it looks both really were, promising both were good like honestly yeah. like I was surprised I had zero expectations for both shows. I didn't even know we were going to watch like either show when we went into that. Um, it was like the summer preview or whatever for Crunchyroll. Yeah, it was. They were previewing all the shows oh, okay. for the for that Crunchyroll is going to cover for this season. Yeah, it, mm-hmm. it was. It actually surprised me. I was like, wow, I had zero expectations for these shows. And like they actually mm-hmm. like were pretty good. Yeah, the, the one I saw was really good. The what I saw of the second one was good. I just stopped paying attention and fell asleep. Um, but <laughs> the the other show that I, I just want to note, I don't think either either of you have seen it. It's the Ancient Magus's, Magus's Bride. They had a first episode last year, and then they released the second what? episode this year. Yeah, it's called Part 1 and Part 2. They're OVAs. Oh, yeah. They're 24 minutes. <clears throat> They're going to release the third one, I think, this month or next month. Well, there's going to be a movie <clears throat> coming out this next month. They're going to be yeah, airing and, it here. And then there's going to be an actual TV anime coming out as well, I guess. Um, but I actually really liked both episodes. The kind of pacing and vibe that I got from it really reminded me of like Spirited Away. Um, and so I, I that's like one of my all time favorite movies. Um, and so I actually really like the show um, and I think think it's been really well done so i'm or the, the yeah. two episodes i've seen so i'm really looking forward to this third ova that they have <clears throat> the movie you mentioned and then the anime that's coming out i think it'll be interesting um yeah i was I gonna watch it one. last or i mean you know like when the first one came out but like <laughs> i noticed that like only one you know like part had come out so mm-hmm. i was just like do i want to like watch this and then just like you know forget about it later so like now that there's a second part like i might watch both and then I know um, our friend Mark, um, I think he like has read some of it and was looking mm-hmm. forward to it. So it's like, I don't know, like maybe we should like watch the movie or something. Um, yeah, it has a really cool. good vibe. So I I would be I'd say we watch it. It's cool. Yeah. <laughs> the um, and part three comes out soon. I believe it's going to be like part two came out and then the anime is going to be released. And then part three will come out not long after the anime is released, like the first few episodes or whatever. <clears throat> so anyways just want to throw that one out there because i don't think either of you'd seen it but uh whether what other shows have you guys actually watched so far mm, i mean not None. not much like None. i saw two of like the shorter format shows so i mm-hmm. saw zero zero children and aho girl um aho girl like i was just like i feel like i'm gonna drop this because like it like within the first six minutes, it was the same slapstick gag of like this girl is just dumb, and she's also like Aoyuki, the voice well, actress. Wasn't that like the synopsis too? Yeah, it's like, she's a stupid. Well, fucking yeah, girl. her name is. Like, she's <laughs> like, <laughs> called Aho girl, girl, and Aho is like, yeah, yeah, idiot. Yeah. So she, like, the voice actress a- Aoyuki is like, you know, <laughs> you know, getting a lot of roles, and um, like she's got that, like, you know, very like you know i don't know how to call it type of voice it's very like you can you could like attribute it to someone that's like more airheaded she's the voice mm-hmm. the japanese voice for futaba and persona 5 drew so yeah. um like it, it she voices like the main chick and the main chick is just just dumb she's like really stupid and like it was the same stupid slapstick 
um, gag over and over how like, wow, this girl is dumb and she likes bananas. And then her childhood friend just fucking punches her (laughs) because she's retarded. And it's just like, (laughs) normally like it's different when like you see like, like you may call this like some sort of like reverse feminism thing or it's like, oh yeah, it's always the girl that's like hitting the dude when like they're dumb. But like this dude just like has no reservation. She's just like fucking tries, just knocks her out. And it's just like, that's just kind of like, okay, just weird for me for like it's seeing the opposite. Up. And so I'm just like, I don't know. It's like Cosma, dude. Cosma is an equal opportunity. Uh, that's yeah, true. That's but true. like it happens like 10 times in a 12 minute yeah. episode. So I'm just oh, like, I don't know. Yeah. It kind of just feels like domestic those short, violence. Those short shows are just like so hit or miss. Like, like the last five minutes were funny. But like, af- you know, like I was just like, I guess it's only a 12 minute episode. I'll finish it. Like the first half of it was just like, this is not funny. So like, I'll, ju- I'll, you know, keep my reservations and judge it after like the second or third episode to see whether I drop it or not. But like the last five minutes were funny. The first seven minutes was not very funny at all. It was just like, you know, a lot of like what I like to think about is like with comedy, it's all about the timing for like the delivery of the jokes. Yeah. And like one of mm. one of like the best shows to um to demonstrate this is like the first and the fourth season of Minami K. Like those were very good at like those two seasons were very good at delivering the joke with like perfect timing. <laughs> Second and third season were not great. But um First and fourth season of Minami K, like that's a good example of like delivering comedic timing, like in a in a good way. This show was just like pfft, not not good. Yeah. And then Sword Zero Children, uh, it was basically just like it's clearly gonna follow like random pairs of like a a guy and a girl, and I was just like uh, I'm probably gonna yeah. lose interest in this. Like yeah. So I don't I don't know. The um. The only other show I've watched is Fate Apocrypha. I watched the first episode. It actually looks pretty cool. Um, the fighting from the beginning was cool. The story seems like it's going to take a cool route. And um, so I'm actually pretty, like, I'm looking forward to it. The first episode I enjoyed the whole way through. Um, I wasn't, like, hmm, kind of getting bored or anything. Because usually, like, first episodes are a lot of setup, you know, and sometimes mm-hmm. that can get boring. But I think they did a pretty good job of, of setting it up and making it feel interesting. So um, I'm looking forward to that one. The I've only seen the other, the is it Fate Stay? The, the My God that is one. Wishing Me, that one. Oh, Fate Zero? <clears throat> Fate Zero. I've yeah. only ever seen Fate Zero, I think. Because I looked at the others, I'm like, I haven't seen these. But, yeah. Uh, so I mean, it looks like it'll be good. I haven't seen it yet. I kind of forgot that that was coming out. Like, I'll probably going to watch it. I still have to finish, like, the last, like, few episodes of Unlimited Blade Works just because I already talked about it in, like, the other episode where it's just, like, there's... They expanded it out too much where you could... Like, I know what happens. I've seen, like, the original movie they came out with it, and, like, I know the plot. So, like, expanding out a fucking conversation for three episodes is not what I want from a fucking mm-hmm. show um <laughs> right. especially something like like fate stay night it's just like dude like i just want to see the fighting don't right don't like kind of have like me Dragon sit Ball here <laughs> watching this conversation for three episodes between the same two people it is boring i'm gonna fall Do you agree with adriel in that sense oh yeah like drew doesn't even know who adriel is so no I mean, we need to introduce drew to adriel, adriel. oh you, you know introduce him to adriel is? no do you you is know he, who Adriel? You, you, you're trying to talk about Adriel. You don't even know Adriel, dude. Yeah, you I know, know who Adriel. Adriel, is, the anime Smash Bros. Yeah. No, you don't. You know who Adriel, the anime Smash. We're gonna. Yeah, I'm gonna test your knowledge of Adriel after. You're full this. of shit. The anime Smash Bros. <laughs> you're full of shit. <laughs> Shut the hell up. Shut the hell yeah. up. <laughs> yeah, Adriel, guys, the anime Smash Bros. <laughs> All right, what's he? Dude, Adriel's what, the best. What 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 does he think about Monogatari? Yeah, the anime Smash Bros. So yeah, no idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no idea. <clears throat> um anyways uh he probably thinks it's great dude because everyone thinks that show's great yeah dude uh, just read up we'll we'll send you some <laughs> literature probably thinks it's tonight dude we'll we'll send you some literature on An- uh, adriel the anime smash bros my favorite and you can blogger. enjoy it my favorite blogger he's of my all favorite time anime dude blogger. he's he is a mm, god he, he is a god he's the best like I, I, oh my it, god i get pure entertainment out of reading his blogs i wish he would write more 
Me too, dude. A hundred percent, dude. It is so what does he entertaining. Th- what does he think about Utsuna, dude? I don't Utsuna, know. I, he hasn't written know, about it. He hasn't. Damn. Yeah, he needs to write more. Damn. Just respect his Triggered. opinions, okay? Trigger. Um, TBH though. Yeah. TBH though. But, but um, so I haven't I haven't watched any other shows besides that. Um, Me neither. I know as more are released, we're all going to be watching more first episodes and stuff like that. And then we're kind of, we'll talk among, you know, in the, in the background and we'll kind of figure out what we're going to probably cover more regularly that we're all watching and things like that. Um, so you should hopefully hear more about what we're actually going to talk about in the coming episode. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, I don't, do you have any other shows that you guys want to mention or? Nah, I don't really have anything else. Monogatari. <clears throat> That's Monogatari. not coming out for a while, have you, you said. When's it coming out? August. Oh, well, then we'll have time to... to Sha- so yeah, Shaft to just kind of does whatever they want, which is fine, <laughs> but... Although, they just when, one thing I do want to mention is, Alec, you did watch Saikano after I recommended it to you. What did you think of it? I did. I liked it. I thought it was very good, um... I liked the that they kind of they kind of I don't know I want to say broke the fourth wall but kind of broke the fourth wall you know by like describing what each person was as type what type of character they were you know and mm-hmm. so I thought that was kind of cool how they would like dissect the the typical harem anime like well you've got the sundere and then you know this and they're like well that you're the that and then and then it kind of didn't take the normal turn that uh that a hair man it would take. Um, but I, I enjoyed it. Definitely. If you want some more insight into the show, check out the blogs Rolando wrote They're They're real good. He did a good job writing them. And, uh, he offers his, his own insight into the show and it's, uh, it's insightful <laughs> for yeah. lack then, of a but, better word. <laughs> and then you said, I guess I, yeah, oh, go, go, ahead, for go ahead. No, it's segueing All right. way off. Well, I mean but, like, cause like I talked <laughs> to you about it, Alec and like, um, I was talking about like, Oh, like, I started to like Megami's character a lot more the second season. Like I thought, you know, she like she was a good character, but like even more so like the second season. Like you said you liked her from mm-hmm. the start, so like um it was like, you know, interesting seeing like a completely different perspective from someone else that like oh Yeah. Like, when I was watching the show, I was sitting there thinking, Okay, um I already forgot the names. Um Sundry Girl, what's her name? Um, um Uh Ari. Oh, she's like yeah, yeah, her. I was like, I don't see that many people liking her. Um, she was like, okay, but I don't see her being the most popular one. I was, I, I'm pretty sure the author girl is gonna be the most popular Utah, one. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, watching that's it, the one and I was like, I, I could see. At first. Right. That uh, in your and you mentioned that in the in your blog post about her being the favorite. I I see all the reasons why she would be the favorite. Um, and I definitely liked her as a character, but I just thought Megumi. Or Megami? No, yeah, that's discount Megumi. Megumin, right? Is it Megami? Yeah, that's their name. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I thought she was just, I don't know, there was something about her. I think it was just ha- how boring she was in nature just made her interesting. And I thought how insightful she was of the people around here just kind of made her a really good character for me. And I was always looking forward to when she would be in it. Also, the jokes that kind of surrounded her at the beginning were funny. And so I just liked her as a character, although I do agree as they brought her into the second season she got a lot better. She, I already liked her before. And then by the end of it, I was like, Oh, bar none, best character in the show. But yeah. Um, especially after her episode where she evolved a lot in one episode, they gave her like, I don't know how they did it, but they, she progressed so much in that one episode and it was not, it didn't feel pushed or rushed or anything. It just sort of happened. And by the end of it, you're like, Holy shit. How'd they do that? They did a really good job of progressing her character. I talk about it in like the episode five through 10 blog. That was the really Mm -hmm. long one, but like another, another blogger kind of mentioned it in like the previous post I was talking about. Um, or I did. And, um, the, they're on WordPress. If you go to like anime wonders.wordpress.com, um, they, they kind of mentioned cause they had read the light novels um, the main reason why the second season was called flat, um, not because it looks like a B, <laughs> but like the, it, it really highlights, you know, Megabee's character cause she's a flat character. And like in the first season we get, um, Utaha describes how to create a character 
And at first you make them as flat as possible. Like there's like no like outstanding characteristics. And then it's like as the the player in the, you know, like visual novel game they're making like gets to know the character more, like other characteristics start to pop out because of like the difference between like how flat they were before. And then you start to notice the, mm-hmm. these different things. And so um, like, you know, they're not really f- flat anymore per se. Like they they've like developed into like this like interesting character and like that's like you know the whole like theory behind like gap moe which is like something you didn't know about like a character before and like the difference between like what you had expected and like what the actuality is is what like gives the sense of quote-unquote moe cuteness or whatever and um they do they do that very well in the second season with megumi and like you don't notice it because like it's so driven with Utaha and Eri, like they just they've got such strong personalities that they just take center stage and like kind of just hijack everything. And then like you see Megumi is just working in the background. And then like you don't notice it until like that episode you're talking about, where mm-hmm. all of a sudden this character development just like culminates. And it's actually just the culmination of everything they've shown throughout all of the previous episodes before. And then you don't realize it until that episode. You're just like, oh mm-hmm. shit. Like she's cool. <laughs> this is like an amazing character, and like it's not until like that episode where like she gets like all this development that you're like, oh yeah, like she has been doing all this this whole time. And you know, I, I thought it was it was it was like very good writing. I I agree. Um, and it, it like that whole like what you're mentioning about um a flat character becoming more interesting because you start to notice more things about them. That's kind of the same way it works in real life because it, there's like a lot of people, they'll give you quote unquote tips about dating people. Don't show all the cards in your hand at the start because if you show what somebody, everything you're about from the very beginning, you quote, you know, you might get boring to that person yeah, or whatever. Whereas if they slowly find out things about you, you're always surprising them. Exactly. Yeah. And so you stay interesting to them. It's the same with characters. Like they're trying to, and, and that makes sense because they're trying to model these characters in TV shows and in, in animes and movies after real types of people. Otherwise, it's not interesting. Obviously, there's the extremes, you know, like fucking Goku yeah. isn't really modeled after any real person <laughs> except maybe Dwayne the Rock Johnson. No, I'm just kidding. But um, so so it makes sense. And I think that's one of the main reasons I liked um, her from the start was because she she was flat. But I was trying to pay attention to like the we like the nuances to her and that sort of thing. Uh, whereas the other ones they're out there and they're, you know, they take center stage on purpose because yeah. their personalities are huge. But the, the girl in the background, you're like, what's she doing? Like, you know, and you kind of, if you pay attention just to her, you start to see all these things. And that's why I think from the beginning, I was like intrigued by her. And then I started to like her more because I started noticing those w- weird little things about her that made her cute or, you know, quirky, et cetera. So that's kind of like, that's kind of how we like uh, Rico in uh, Sakura quest as well. It's like, she's that off character who doesn't say much, but she's always doing like cute or goofy things. And mm-hmm. it's, it kind of seems like the same sort of deal here. Yeah. Like quirky. Yeah. It, yeah. It's, it's very similar to, to Ruriko, um, in that respect. Yeah. Well, you were going to segue drew. Oh, I just want to say, like, I got my roommate and a couple of my fr- uh, other friends to watch uh, Attack on Titan. They oh, nice. Like, they, they, they like Dragon Ball Z, and that's, like, they're, like, the only anime that they've, like, ever watched and liked or whatever. Um, so I'm like, hey, you guys should, like, try this. You might like it. And so, like, one of my friends is already caught up completely <laughs> and, like, wants more. He just <laughs> he it, and you're like, well, like, good three luck. days. Jesus. Um, <laughs> So I'm like, like, yeah, episodes. you're you're kind of lucky that, you know, season two just came out and they're like making more. So it's like you just got to hold on for that. But they uh, don't they're have to asking wait me, three like, and a half years. <laughs> exactly. Um, and they're like, I don't know how you did it, dude. <laughs> 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 um, but now they're they're like asking me for like more anime recommendations and stuff like that. School so days. That's, that's kind of nice. cool. We introduce school introduce days. The, uh, don't, don't school, school days. days. I'm no. not going to. Don't do, that, yeah, you, you don't, don't do that. Don't do that to watch anime. Yeah, <laughs> yeah wait it. till they're like actually hooked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. That's cool. It's always cool to hear about people like getting hooked on on anime yeah. and hearing about the shows they want to watch. That's like a good yeah. show. That's like everybody can kind of relate to. It's like good, good action twists mm-hmm. and all that good stuff. So. Yeah, good writing, music. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. But you know, I think that's all we got today. Have uh, that's all we've got for today. 
I might got be half feeling. Four today. Got, yeah, got half four today. In, so out. I I had a I had a rum and Always. coke before I had my beer. So it's okay. I had a Sapporo before this one. Okay, um, I got sushi before this. Oh, nice. Mm, that, Ooh, sounds that sounds good. good. Um, but yeah, that's all we've got for you today here at Anime On Draft. Um, if you want more of us, definitely check out our WordPress, wordpress.animeondraft.com. No, you, uh, no. you reversed it. Animeondraft.wordpress.com. <laughs> there we go. Um, you can see the blog post we were talking about earlier as well as all our episodes and all of our content that's on YouTube and not necessarily on SoundCloud as well. Um, you can find us at SoundCloud. We also have an iTunes, so you can get all of these podcasts um, on there. And then check out our Twitter for any updates about episodes or just stuff in general. So uh, from us here at Anime on Draft, that's all we got for you, and have a good one. Goodbye. See you later. <laughs>